All right, all right. Welcome back to our season finale of Violence Interrupters. My name is Pete Eson Keller. I'm uh, your host today, and sitting in with me is a Pastor Greer. Um, Pastor Greer, you can introduce yourself and your organization. So I'm Pastor Greg Greer. I'm head of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, Freedom First International Chicago. Happy to be here. All right. All it's right. good to see you, sir. Thank you. All right, Thank so you. Uh, Pastor Greer and I do a lot of community activism work throughout Chicago, and uh, much big ups to uh, T.O., mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Hardeman, who um, is basically out on business right now, and we're sitting in just to clarify some of the things. We're going to jump right off into it. So this weekend, man, another seven killings throughout Chicago. Um, it's just been a tragedy, you know, each Monday morning turning on the news and keeping in touch with all our brothers and sisters across the city who have, um, you know, we could they call in, they want to know what to do, they want to know where they can go, they want to get uh, their teenagers help. So... Let's touch base on some of that. Mm -hmm. One of the killings was in the Austin area, matter of fact. Um, and there was even one where a young man was outside his uh, back of his garage and he was washing his car. And you can't even wash your car in your own alley anymore. So, um, and then there was a pregnant woman, sure, you know. Sure. So, I mean, it was just back to back. It was just, it was just a travesty, you know, all across the city. So what are some of your thoughts on that, Pastor Greer? Well, you know, one of the things that we have to do is we really have to start looking at the gun violence situation as an epidemic. The Center for Disease Control has gone into other areas like uh, they did last did a study in Baltimore mm -hmm. about gun violence. Gun violence um, and violence period is a disease and for there's a lot of reasons why it's sad but if we can focus on some of the, the uh, aspects that maybe we can get people help, there's a lot of issues. Um, Besides the criminal aspect of it, we look at the criminal aspect of it really, really right. harshly, but then there's mm -hmm. other layers is what right. I'm saying. And I'm not saying that, you know, that primarily we focus on one area than the other, but mm -hmm. the fact that there's a lot of people who have psychological issues who are in the communities and, you know, people just really need help. Very valid. So what would you tell to some of the parents? I mean, you always see it. We see it on the news and parents come out and they know that the, that the child may have done something and that they're living the gang, the gang association lifestyle, um, and they will stick to the kids at the bitter end. What do you actually have to say to those type of parents? How can you get them to be influenced enough to get some, some treatment for the kids? Well, you know, we have to really understand and show people that the path, and when you see young kids and youth that are going in the wrong direction, here, here's why uh, it was very important. Ten years ago, they took civics education out of school. Mm -hmm. Civics education taught people how to understand what's going on with government, city governments, and that sort of thing. But there's a penal part of it. The city, the civics could have really taught people. And that civics part is really important because, you know, then you have your criminal justice system, right. you have your courts, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And I think all kids need to understand that because not only is that a deterrent, but it's a level of prevention that's there too. Mm. Mm, very interesting. Um, you know, as we go speak to you and I, and you've been there in many cases, we go down to Governor State. Right. And uh, we speak at um, University of Chicago and all over the place um, to these classes that are um, graduating each year. Yeah. Some of them are in business. Some of them are basically in the criminal justice system. Um, and some are in the medical field, and, but some are in the, the philanthropic therapist field, I sure, guess you could say. Sure. And, um, you know, a lot of times I actually have turned parents into realizing that, you know, your kid does have a problem. Right. Stop trying to stick up for this kid who you know just went out there and shot three people. Let's get this kid some help. Don't try to, you know, what I call sugarcoating it because, um, you know, I mean, this is kind of feeding the problem. So... I just kind of got to move forward a little bit. Um, gun control, you did touch base on that. And, 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 and you guys, feel free to call in like you do every, um, you know, every show. We want to keep this show happening. Um, again, you can call in at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. It is across the bottom of the screen. Um, well, real quick, I know the phone lines are blowing up. Let's get to a caller real quick. But I do want to touch on that gun control. Uh, caller, you're online with us. Go ahead. Hi, how you doing? I got a question. Mm -hmm. I've been watching the news probably ever since January, and every weekend we get the statistics of the number of people that's been shot, which is mm -hmm. leading up into the double digits, mm -hmm. the people who have, been, who have been killed, which stays in the double digits almost every weekend. 
right. including this past weekend. My question is this. I, I also addressed this question to Andy Holmes. I asked him on the train one day, why do we get these statistics and then the media tells us this and there's no one in custody? That's letting people think that you can just go out and kill somebody and get away with it. Mm. I mean, we don't even know if someone from two weeks ago was found and caught on a murder charge or someone from two weeks ago was charged for shooting somebody out of 40, 50 people being shot. They're not putting the statistics out there for people to understand that, hey, it's safe to get back in my street. They got a murderer off the street. They got a person who just shot somebody and killed somebody two weeks ago. He's off the street. This is a problem that the, the citizens of the city of Chicago is pretty much sitting back scratching their head and wondering. Every time we get those statistics on Monday morning, and nobody's in custody. Right. I don't understand that. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much, Carl, Hello? for your input. Do um, you want to address that real yeah. quick? Because I have a lot to say. And, and it was really good points, Carl. Yeah. So, so, so now, the, communi the level of communication that comes from uh, the Chicago Police Department when it comes to gun violence statistics is, is minimal. To your point, they could do a better job in communicating and drilling that information down. And yes, there is a level of pre prevention. In certain areas, maybe it would be more needed, especially when you see high violence in those areas. So, um, you know, and I, I don't like, I like to talk specifically. So year to date, year to date, Chicago is pushing over 300, because I don't have the information for today. But as of June 27th, 4 p.m., our homicide total was 300, uh, just over 300. So we are at a historical high, yes. and that information has to come, uh, and it has to come with a plan of action and a course course of action. One of the things that you can watch out for, caller, is every month Chicago releases its global uh, homicide and, and violence totals, and that's a that's a really huge piece, and that's also reported to the FBI as well. We need to look at it from a federal standpoint. We have the DOJ in town, right. you know, looking at uh, overhauling the Chicago or Chicago police reform. These are the types of things that we need to talk about and really drill down on. So where can the caller go? Say, for instance, because when I open my newspaper or I look online that Monday after, you know, after the effect and after right. the, uh, you know, the whole weekend, and, I, and I'm like the caller. I look for the see, you know, did anyone get apprehended? Right. You know, if there's a sense of death to some little girl, did, did, did the you know, culprit get caught? Do you know what's going on with that? Where can we go as a community to look for these certain type of statistics? You know, let me suggest there's several, but one that I really like and I really use a lot is the, um, the Chicago Homicide Watch. And this was an independent effort by the Chicago Sun-Times to bring not just statistics, but they actually show the faces of the people mm. who have been killed. Okay. And then there's a story behind the faces to let folks know that this gun violence and community violence is real. So when you start adding up the totals with the faces mm. and not just the statistic, then you can see the real human tragedy of okay. the of the story. Okay, great. We're yeah. gonna keep it going. Ball is rolling. Um, I know the phone lines are blowing up. We're gonna take another call. Caller, you are online with us right here. Violence interrupters, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. What's up? Okay. You know. I've got a different way of looking at this whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, bear with me, if you will. Uh, basically, in Chicago, let's say it's about six or seven areas where all this violence is occurring. About six or seven geographic areas. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing that is just mind-blowing. It's been the same six or seven geographic areas for the past 40 years. Mm -hmm. It's been right. four decades when these same six or seven areas are, are mired in a drug war. Right. So that leads me to believe that unequivocally they don't want to stop it. They keep doing, we've had, uh, understand this, we've had 30 years of data in terms of marching. We've mm -hmm. been marching for 30 years to stop right. the violence. We have been uh, praying for 25 years to stop the violence and it hasn't happened. So the bottom line is this is a racist outlook in terms of the application of, of, of services to keep the citizens safe. We could not do it here in Chicago. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter who's the police chief. It doesn't matter how they deploy the uh, police officers. 
We need outside federal intervention. That's job one, to make the streets safe. We can't keep getting murdered, getting coffee, sitting in cars, sitting on steps. Okay, it's, it's not happening. Everything they're doing hasn't worked. So now we need to all come together and demand federal help to keep us safe here in Chicago. We're, we're, we're in a state of crisis. We're living in a war zone, and, and it's not changing. Thank okay. you for giving all me right. the air time. Thank you so much, caller. Um, real quick, let me say this. Yeah, 30 years we've been um, marching, 30 years we've been, um, you know, pretty much, you pro, know, going, yeah, you know, pro, yeah, protesting and um, proactive um, with, I, I don't want to say minimal results because there has been a lot of things that have happened behind the scenes, you know, saying a lot of change in lives, a lot of uh, people we've gotten into the political arena, you know, brothers and sisters that definitely have made some moves. Um, I... It's, it, this is huge. Let me just say that this is a huge dilemma. This is not just one answer, you know. So um, I want to come up with some solutions real quick because I know the phone lines are blowing up. Um, let me just say real quick that you can always reach, you know, each one of us. And um, you can, you know, send your kids to us, teenagers. We want to get jobs out here. We want to do what we can. So keep up with us. Um, one of the websites we have is tohardiman.com. That's regular T-I-O Hardiman, H-A-R-D-I-M-A-N. Dot com to Hardiman. You can come to uh, um, my organization, which is Ulon. That's www.ulon.us. Okay, and there's all kind of um, different programs we have on there. A lot of it is free, so I'm um, just we're letting people know about it. Mention your website, you know, real quick. Yeah, that's uh, greglgreer.com, which is, which if you Google my name, G-R-E-G-G, -G, middle initial L-G-R-E-E-R, -E -E to take you to all of the organizations and some of the projects that we have to stop community violence and gun violence. Correct. So don't give up. You know, to that caller, you're right. I don't think right now, you know, we're saying that we're in an all-time high crisis and that we need to, uh, the federal, you know, I guess federal agencies to step in, um, whether it be FEMA, martial law, however you want to say it, which we, uh, many of us activists don't agree upon because there just need to be more people that need to come out of the woodworks and we can police ourselves. Uh, we don't really want uh, anyone else to come in because that has proven of many, many times not to work once it's happened. So just keep that in mind. And then it will also be a police state, which means there'll be checkpoints, which will most likely only be in what we call the hood um, the same spots that you're talking about have been killing for the last 30 to 40 years. So um, you want to add to that? Yeah, you know, and, and just really to add to your point, really what it has to do is it has to start with us, you and I, and in, in our communities, having conversations, getting together with the neighbors. If you see a cat coming down the street and that, you know, that he's out of place, then, you know, you may want to have block clubs look at people who are coming into the block for the areas that have a lot of gang activity. You know, I would probably say that, you know, you know, a suggestion is to talk to the neighbors, and I think when folks get fed up, then they want to make a change. Okay. You know, and that's what it takes. All right, let's keep it rolling real quick. Um, we're going back to the phone lines. Caller, you're on air with us, Violence Interrupters. Yo, man. Yes. Yo, man, use your trump card. Man, use your trump card. Thank you. All right. Well, listen, okay. I know you, you're always going to have some people calling in, um, right. you know, kind of like, you know, <laughs> with the joke. But uh, let's, let's, let's go to a real right. caller. Caller, you're online with us. Let's go. Okay, you know, yeah. I'll just be real brief. Um, we've had, we've had uh, the National, okay, people say don't call in the National Guard. Mm. It'll be a police state. They'll kill people. We can't have them come in. But yet, we have facts where the National Guard during uh, Katrina, they came in, it was looting, it was violence, the National Guard came in, and they stopped it all without firing a shot, just their presence alone. And the structure they put down uh, eliminated all of that. And then the National Guard is also, they, they, they're also very active when there's disasters and things like that. So all I'm saying is, as opposed to calling them a boogeyman and being afraid and saying, no, we don't want them, we need to bring them in to make the streets safe and then deal with it from there because we can't do it ourselves. We can't do it with block clubs. We can't do it with meetings on the street. And if uh, men try to get together to stop these guys on the corner, they're going to end up in jail or shot dead. 
So we are, as citizens of the United States, we are calling upon the federal government to come in and assist us in just being able to survive uh, leaving our homes in Chicago. We can't even do it. It's a drug war. We, there's profit involved. They're not going to stop. We have to stop the reason why the violence is occurring. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Carla, very much. Um, the, bear in mind, you know, when we say we, you're speaking of you. You know, let's, let's, let's clear that up real quick. Um, you know, and there are other people who I'm sure agree with it. But also bear in mind, too, that we can walk out the house. We can do things. It's not at what you think. It's not at an all-time high. Um, and most of these are happening after the sun goes down, you know, at night. You know, we wake up in the morning, we hear about all this and that, and, and, and the killings and the shootings and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, there's stuff that happens, you know, during the daytime. But the majority of stuff is still happening at night. And like Pastor said, men are going to have to stop, you know, saying, crying about it and come out. Now, I have a lot of men that are um, a part of Ulan and, and violence interrupters and Pastor Greer um, organization who are standing up, who are going out there, who are making change. So, I mean, before you, you know, you say that everybody and, and, and we this and we that, just I, I need you to come out. I need you to be a little bit more instrumental and in being a part of the solution and not looking for a solution. But Pastor Greer. Well, you know, and, and here's the thing. When you know, when you compare Chicago, which we are in a crisis situation. We all believe that. There's no doubt about that. But when you compare Chicago, what happened there to Katrina, let's not get it that we have two totally different extremes. You know, and what we got to do is Violence Interrupters was a, a award winning program and it made change in the city. And it took Teal Hardeman, the Violence Interrupters in their program to go into the communities and talk to people one on one. We got to have more programs like that. One thing that you have to one of the suggestions that I would make, which would be brief and short, is our governor has suspended the budget. Mm -hmm. And in that budget cut, there were Violence Interrupters programs. Yeah. And that's been gone for a year. Think mm -hmm. about it. When the budget was suspended, we had we lost violence interrupter programs, not just violence interrupters, but several others, which these are folks who could be on the front lines making a difference right to this very second. So these are things that we have to think about. Exactly. We do need the budget. We need a budget. Yes. We need any type yes, of do. budget. Um, no, we need people to really that um, are in a position to have finance to look for a grassroots organization and donate because that's exactly how we, you know, survive. That's so, right. um, let me, you know, real quick, just say, Pastor Greer, um, you know, I see you out here on the front lines. Tell me some of the things that you are specifically doing and some of the projects you may have coming up to let people know so that they may come out and be involved. So our coalition right now has an initiative, let's, let's speak specifically on gun violence, called We Rise Above Bullets. And that initiative is going back into the communities that matter. Uh, we partnered, my first partnership, as you very well know, as you being a violence interrupter, was to really go and bring that level of communication that you didn't see from Chicago police because they're going through reform, they're being overhauled, being right. right there in the faces of the people who were out there. Maybe some of those people were challenging the communities, you know, some of the gang bangers some of the you know that is some of the things that we're doing and and coalition with violence interrupters we're also building coalitions with groups like Amnesty International uh, my organization the SCLC and we are communicating and giving a different perspective you're not getting it just from government officials just from Chicago real quick one thing that we, a problem that I wanted to say is that before the last police chief that we had superintendent um there was an issue at one point to where as he was watering down the numbers or actually lying about the homicide numbers and he was caught red-handed doing mm -hmm. that if there was a multiple homicide on the scene he would report several people shot and killed as one shooting and that was discovered and found out he still kept a job shortly after that but these are the types of things that we have to put folks on the vanguard to continue mm -hmm. watching if you have multiple voices and some people's voices are silent, then that's not helping the community. Correct, correct. And, and another thing, too, I want to put out there, make sure that if you're a, um, I guess, a business owner or such, that right. you give and you contact organizations like us or any grassroots organization and let them know that you have work. You know, so I challenge any any business owner out there to get in touch with us. You can call you can get in touch with TOHardeman.com, Ulon.us, Pastor Greer. 
SCLC, Freedom First International dot net. And put it out there and we will make sure that it's put out there from the west side to the south side to the north side of Chicago. That's right. We are out here offering jobs. So that is one of the biggest things that I had these young gang members come up to us all the time and saying, man, if I could just work, I would get off these streets. I don't care. I just need That's a right. job. Um, and it's been proven that if you are if you are able to give a young um, young black man a young um, you know Hispanic man a job, they will work. They will work, and they will show up on time, and they will kind of work harder than the average worker because they want to prove themselves. Because no one gives them a chance. Either they got an X on their back, or they have some type of uh, background because no one is offering a job. So it's like a catch twenty two. So we, we are challenging anyone out there to get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. And if you got a job, I don't care what kind it is, let it be known and we will get you a hard worker. All right. So um, moving right along, let's say, let's get back to uh, the gun control. Let's touch some bases, you know, with this gun control. What are some of your thoughts on what's going on here in Illinois right now? Well, right now, you know, Chicago itself or Illinois specific, but let's drill it down to Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, we have historically one of the highest uh, uh, levels of gun violence and we lead pretty much lead the gun violence situation in america and that is really coming just from the south side of chicago mainly uh we have a uh we have three gun shops in illinois all together one of them is chucks out in dalton illinois we have another one in lyons and there's another one right off the top i can't think of specifically where that one is uh but the, the the level of guns that are being sold from Chucks alone, which is in Dalton, you can walk from Dalton, Illinois, mm -hmm. to Chicago City limits, mm -hmm. uh, roughly in about ten minutes if you were right. just on foot. Well, statistically, ninety eight percent, ninety five percent of the guns that are used in crimes are coming from Chucks, right. according to statistics. Mm. So that shows you that one of the issues is the level of access. We got to start getting harder on these offenders. People who shoot are out there shooting the kids. If the gun, if the gun laws were stiffer when it comes to offenders, you know, the first time you shoot a child, you know, it's an automatic 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that would be a huge level of change. And to, to heighten that point real quick, the CDC, I'm sorry, yeah, it was the Center for Disease Control. And uh, the New York Times got together. They did a study, again, in Baltimore and New York, and they said that, well, New York doesn't have that problem because their gun laws are stiffer, and they have right. more people per capita than Chicago, but their gun laws are stiffer, so offenders mm. don't want to offend because they know that they're going to get automatic long-term sentences. Mm. I think that that would be a step in the right direction. Mm. Very interesting. Okay, well, listen up. You know, you hear right here, violence interrupted. This is our season finale, so you got to excuse us for keep putting out our information out there because we want, you, we want to hear from you guys. We want to see you guys. We want to network with you in the field. So you can still reach us at tohardeman.com. Please write that down, www.tohardeman.com. We have... Um, Put your it's out there again, Pastor. That's going to be uh, gregelgreer.com or freedomfirstinternational.net. Spell it as it sounds. Freedomfirstinternational.net, N-E-T. All right, please get in touch with us, and you can reach us at www.ulon.us. Okay? And uh, feel free to leave comments. Um, let us know that you are ready to, uh, you know, be a part of the movement because we're out here every day. Let's Every face day. it, we, we, we are out here and we're just bringing this to you because we actually care. We're the, we're the guys who care and we want you guys to network with us and meet us on these streets. Let's go out here and make change. So Let's give some closing remarks. We're getting ready to wrap this up real quick. Well, well ahead, closing remarks is uh, we need to keep an eye on what's going on uh, uh, from the Supreme Court. There was just a decision that came down. And remember, gun violence is not, you know, just people shooting people. You know, you have domestic violence. And remember the young lady who was just stabbed on the red line mm -hmm. on right. 47th Street. You know, these are the types of things that uh, we have to be cognitive of. And, you know, it's a multifaceted issue. Uh, Wednesday at 9 o'clock, we will be uh, at the federal building and we will be uh, doing a protest about gun violence so you might want to come down nine to ten o'clock and it will be a coalition of folks who were who've been on the front lines great so let me just say give a shout out to special people michael brown jeffrey camp rakia boyd philip coleman and john crawford mm -hmm. betty jones quintonio mm -hmm. legria tamir rice Rochelle mcintosh and eric garner the quam mcdonald charles brown six pack Cedric chapman and tyshawn lee trayvon martin ronald johnson sandra bland and finish nunu cockham and demario bailey wake up people wake up 
We want to say we love you guys. Thank you for being a part of our show this whole season. Man, it was, uh, I, I just love seeing people on the street and knowing we make a change. You know what I'm saying? So Violence Interrupters is out here. Much love to T.O. Hardeman because it keeps it going. That's Peace. Right. Love you guys. One.